Uh, I'm Philip Tan. I am a research scientist at the MIT Game Lab, which is a research lab uh, in the Comparative Beta Studies Department of MIT. Uh, this is actually part of a class CMS 611, uh, also known uh, as course 6073. It's a joint class, so it's two course numbers. Uh, which is creating video games. And uh, what uh, we are doing throughout the entire s semester is uh, we work in teams. Students uh, form teams to make video games, uh, starting from very, very small scale experimental things to sort of larger, more polished projects. And for their final project, they're designing a game for streamers. Uh, this might be uh, people who are speed running. This might, be a, this might be a competitive game, so a little bit more like an eSport. It might be something that's designed for humor or like a party game uh, for, you know, to, just to entertain a Twitch audience, just like you. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but uh, today I'm actually not going to show something that uh, the, the students in my class made. The students in my class are actually helping me, uh, helping me moderate uh, the Twitch chat uh, because uh, that's part and parcel of live streaming, which is uh, trying to be able to create an environment where people on Twitch or any streaming service can feel comfortable chatting with each other and interacting. Um, I can see the Twitch chat, uh, but it's a little bit difficult for me to watch the Twitch chat and show you what I'm going to be showing you today, which is the Minecraft Institute of Technology, uh, which was not built by my students, uh, but rather built by, uh, whoa, hello. <laughs> uh, there's somebody right in front of me. Uh, no, it's what was built by um, mostly MIT undergrads, but also uh, uh, staff and research scientists and um, grad students. Uh, largely what happens when uh, people uh, couldn't go back to campus because of the, uh, the COVID-19 lockdown. Um, so uh, what I'm hoping to do is uh, show you around a little bit of what's been built. Oh wait, hold on. Before I get there, I need to uh, uh, get some URL. Okay, um, <laughs> and uh, and that's Sheena. Uh, Sheena Atek. Uh, can Hello. You Hello. Yep. Our and proximity chat is working pretty well, and yes, I am on a horse. <laughs> yes, excellent. Well, I mean, this is actually a very, very large campus, so you know, I I expect we'll be riding or flying a lot, um, and. Uh, you were involved with this right at the beginning. I mean, did, what, was this originally your idea or, uh, or, or a group of you come up with the idea at the same time? Can you tell, tell us a little bit about how this came about? Uh, yeah, sure, absolutely. So um, I think all of this started um, uh, primarily from like when we were still um, on campus, actually, back that Thursday where we all got the email that was saying, oh, it's only like very large events and international and domestic travel that are being canceled. So uh, as a lot of dorms and undergraduate student life was preparing for CPW, our campus preview weekend, we were all thrown into an, oh my gosh, CPW is canceled. What do we do to show the pre-frosh around campus if they can't come to campus, mm -hmm. so to say? So there was a lot of brainstorming going on about um, things like you know having some sort of virtual like club penguin like a second life kind of thing like doing 3d models or something like that and then we got the following tuesday i think march 10th the notice that everyone had to be sent home from campus or almost everyone except for those with ex exemptions mm -hmm. but um in that time we had like a whole like frantic packing week and everything and once we got home and got settled in for like a, those like two weeks that we were supposed to be sort of self-isolating from family, having come from a place that interacted with a lot of people. We were sitting around, um, actually a lot of us were on the Busy Beavers Discord server, which had been set up to help connect the community um, in the wake of all being sent home. Um, yeah, and someone came up with the idea of, you know, why don't we have a Minecraft server and we try to recreate campus? So I think the first server was set up by Jeffrey Yu, who's a sophomore. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, everyone hopped onto the project. Um, I think Alex Patton uh, for, like helped put down like the initial plots for where all the buildings would go and everything. And um, from there, people just started looking up floor plans, using photographs, using their memory, and building up blocks. Yeah. And you know, Kidding Court, which is where we are right now, is one of those venues. Mm. I'm just panning around just to show the audience what that looks like. And there's already things in here that, you know, that 
you know, like the Purell dispenser in the middle of the courtyard, for instance. You know, that's not necessarily in the floor plans, but it's <laughs> clearly, you know, uh, something that people remember. But also things from the past, like the police car right at the top of the dome. Uh, that is a classic, classic hack. Um, should we take a look at that? Yeah, let's zoom up. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I think uh, Alex Pat and I were the two people that helped put up the Great Dome using um, the World Edit plugin. Actually, mm -hmm. um, we basically used like a half circle that had been generated out of quartz blocks and just sort of um, trimmed and modified around to make it look like the dome. And then I logged off for a few hours and logged back on, and then suddenly there was this police car on top of there, which was just. <laughs> So amusing, like you can see all the signs around there with all the little details people have added, right. the IHTFP license plate and all. So I mean, this is a classic MIT hack that's, you know, uh, archived in the MIT Museum and, and there's photos of this all over campus. Uh, the real police car was really just the outside of a police car um, built on, pot, um, on a wooden frame, but it did have like an inflatable police car uh, in there with a box of donuts. Uh, so yeah. Uh, there is some history. So there's a little bit of a combination of uh, campus as it was designed, campus as we remember it, but also campus as it used to be, uh, all sort of rolled into this one Minecraft world. Um, and yeah, so so yeah, uh, let's, uh, let's head over to dorm row because I think that's something where clearly a lot of people have spent a lot of time uh, paying a lot of attention to. Um, so you lead away. Sure thing. Um, we have warps installed on the server. So if you do the command like slash warp to a certain dorm, you can go there. But it's much more fun to fly over campus. Right. So the thing about this is this is this is a one to one scale. And Minecraft was originally designed to be one uh, build with one meter blocks. Uh, every rectangle, oh, sorry, every cube is a one meter cube. Um, and so uh, I've always uh, thought, you know, what what's it going to take for us to like make campus metric, and maybe this one project will do that. Um, so this is Massey Hall. Um, I have to get closer to the sign to so that people can actually see that they've actually got um, some really neat text going on, and that is a hack uh, uh, as well. Not. Not not in the MIT uh, pranks kind of hack, but in a sort of a technological hack where they actually create maps um, of uh, of uh, giant spaces, and then they, they 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 can do sort of artwork, and then they paste that map on a wall to be able to create things like text and signs. I can tell you that the fast closing doors are definitely a love letter to the overly fast closing doors. Oh, that was intentional? Okay. Partly. <laughs> I've been hit by these doors several times walking in. Right. And, um, you know, this is, this is, a uh, this used to be Ashdown, if I recall, uh, which was a grad, a grad student dorm. So for anybody who's in the, uh, stream who might be watching this, who might be a grad student, uh, it's the same building, uh, but now it's an undergrad dorm called Messi. And, uh, but what, what do we have here? We have like mailboxes on the left, uh, a desk. On the right. You have so, the trash yeah. and recycling also. Oh display. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The green and the brown, nice. So mm -hmm. you know this, and, and and what I find that's a lot of fun just walking around the dorms is that it's sort of clear that these are spaces where people have a lot of fun memories, you know, and that the, they have to be building these things from memory. They can't, you can't, or, or maybe photographs, I guess. Um, but are there any like details in Messi that you? you think that we should be paying attention to? It's a bunch of cool things, but... Um, I think we could go into dining, which is like fairly remarkable, like the detail that it's been remade into. Okay, that's... Uh, a lot of people have seen. It's this way, I this think. Way. All right. So again, this is this is campus dining, so a lot, a lot of mm -hmm. students get their food here, and you know, you can sort of see a sort of a grill and ovens. One of the dining rooms actually has like tables and the like into it. Mm -hmm. And a fireplace? Is that a real thing? Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, there is a fireplace. Nice. I mean, not being an undergrad, I haven't actually like eaten in a lot of undergrad dining for a very long time. <laughs> um, so I know the student sector, but not much else. Ooh. So there's already people in chat uh, comparing the quality of different dining uh, venues on campus. Plus, plus to next dining. I love next dining. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like people even like attempted to recreate like a bathroom to some mm -hmm. extent in the corner. And, again, this is the sort of thing that you know I would imagine a lot of people. Uh, you know, well, in, in, in a lot of office buildings, you wouldn't necessarily have a working uh, people creating a working bathroom. They might put up a, the walls and a door, but it, but that's it. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, yeah. let's let's take a look at uh, at McCormick mix maybe. Yeah, sure. Um, McCormick's really special to me because that's uh, usually my dorm, and that was the first building I actually built. Um, onto this project because I was uh, thinking, you know, maybe McCormick might not be represented if we don't have high interest from our dorm. Mm -hmm. So I made it my mission to build it. All right. That's right. Along with a bike cage on the side. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, that's a sort of detail of like, if you were just working on floor plans, you might put up a roof and the walls, but then you wouldn't like put bike racks in there. And I think the horses should be in there too. Frankly. Yeah, I've been tethering my horses to various places on campus. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so details. Yep, most of the first floor of the Cormac is actually recreated. Like here we've got desk, we've got dispensers for mailboxes, we have some of the various offices and meeting rooms along the side. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, down the hall is dining and some of our living rooms actually along with views into the courtyard, which is actually a very central place where things like um, McCormick barbecue nights and um, various other house activities happen. Is that like yeah. a particularly like, um, mm -hmm. is it, are, are the barbecues like the thing that most people remember from that? Like, should we put, like, should there be grills in there eventually? Um, yeah, I think we can move like grills and like other things that represent, uh, yes, particular house traditions and the like. Mm -hmm. Eventually, um, since I've been the only person working on this so far, it's kind of been on me. Yeah. How about these? Are, are, are these walls that are intended to be full height walls, or are these uh, um, something else? Yeah, this has been actually part of my experiments with knowing what rooms and like what stairwells should be represented. Because mm -hmm. due to the limited amount of space in Minecraft, since this is a one-to-one -one replica and walls are not a meter thick, there are a lot of spaces that are a lot smaller than they really should be in real life because the walls are just so thick and take up an extra like two square feet per thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've had to cut out like a lot of rooms and make sure that uh, and make sure that only like spaces that I feel like you know should be represented are represented, and um, often merging certain areas because it's not exact. It's more of a spiritual recreation of the places that felt really important to us. So this is like a prototypical, what we're seeing here is like a prototypical section uh, to which you would then copy and paste uh, if you were happy with it. Uh, partly. Um, I think part of it was also ex excavating where things like stairwells could be hmm. because of McCormick's design of being two towers. So right. there would be two elevator shafts, two types of stairwells um, and the like. So this is just sort of a cutaway before things are finalized. Okay. So yeah. let's take a look at the, you, you mentioned elevators. Yes. I know you worked on the elevators. Yes, the elevator. That was also one of the first things I put in. So we managed to have a working elevator shaft, but um, for now it only goes from the first floor to the seventh floor. But in the corner here, you get in, there are these buttons that allow you to go up and down from the first floor. You would probably only be able to go up anyway. But yeah, if you hit it, it's a little loud, but It'll take you up to the seventh floor, which is my floor. I think a bunny got in the ground floor, by the way. For folks who may not be familiar with the MIT campus, there are, in fact, bunnies all around the MIT campus, mostly in the green areas. Uh, probably yep. not as many as you're going to see in Minecraft, but yeah. <laughs> still a lot. So yeah, this is the walls that I put up for my floor. This is what's supposed to be the kitchen space. Um, and I've actually furnished my room in the corner, which is pretty neat. Mm -hmm. So 
So I don't know if we have people in the uh, in the Twitch chat who are you know, who haven't been to MIT before, but you know, here's a dorm room. <laughs> and oh, for and us. Oh, sorry, my friend left a little message for me. Mm -hmm. Nice. So it's nice that 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 friends leave uh, leave notes for you, which which is a thing that real real MIT dorm people do, right? They have like whiteboards on your walls and they leave messages for each other. Mm -hmm. I usually have a whiteboard on my door for pretty much that purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think but we... yeah, as you'll see, like most of the rooms still aren't fully represented because we're still deciding on how to divide some of the walls because not all of the rooms on the floor plan can be represented. So I noticed that some of the other dorms, uh, and we'll pass them on the way there, have like generic rooms that they've copy pasted over and over again. Oh, oh Fire Scar, hello. Hello. Hi. I was just going to uh, actually suggest that we uh, pop over to McGregor and check out your thing because we're at right at two fifteen right now. So sure thing. Let's uh, go head down. Maybe take the elevator down. <laughs> okay. Because I need to return the platform anyway. All right. All right. Uh, where's our down button? I'm getting requests from Twitch uh, eventually to show next time J in, entry, which, uh, <laughs> which we will be heading towards uh, uh, the, into the direction of next. And I'll definitely show the uh, media lab because that's why my office is. All right, so McGregor. Oh yeah, I really love how next turned out. It's um, kind of one of the dorms that I culturally affiliate with, even if I don't physically live there. Right. It's a good time. All right. Yeah, um, I also built Kappa Alpha Theta, which is. Sorry. It was one I... of the grad dorms. Mm -hmm. Ka wait, Kappa Al Alpha Theta now has a. It's been a while uh, since I was an undergrad. So does Kappa Alpha Theta have a living space on campus now? Um, I think it was like in the mid 2000s, it got converted from Green Hall, which was a graduate student right. uh, women's dorm into uh yeah kappa alpha theta space so okay. i created that considering i can usually see theta from the west penthouse roof so everyone now knows exactly how long ago i was an undergrad <laughs> all right let's head over to mcgregor um Uh, so let's see. We and have, others have and groups there. that are on dorm row also represented. Yeah. I think it was really awesome how we had like a lot of representation from Greek life of the various spaces that um, these people wanted to represent, like their houses. And they showed up to build them, which was awesome. Okay. Yeah, people don't. Uh, uh, necessarily think that MIT has a lot of fraternities, but it totally does. Okay, what are we looking at, Vyaska? So I took the elevator from inside and put it out here. So Just to see how it works? Like, yeah. So, so it's a bunch of sticky blocks and pistons. Yeah. And depending on which one gets triggered first, the top left observer or the bottom right observer mm -hmm. determines whether it goes up or down. So inside the shaft, it, all the buttons are doing is just triggering one of these. Okay. Activate one, and it goes forever <laughs> until you stop it with a block. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is a good demo. Uh, so. We could pop in and actually use it. Yeah, sh should we like go inside, uh, yeah. McGregor? And this is the first building that was built, right? I remember Shana, you were mentioning this. Yeah, the first um, building on campus that was built was Kresge Auditorium, but the first okay. dorm that was built was McGregor, and like it was completed. Like we people had like duplicating rooms and everything inside, mm -hmm. and people have gone in to actually furnish the rooms to an extent yeah. in various entries, which has been really cool to see. This is the unfinished E entry. Mm -hmm. That's like a lounge area, and here's the elevator. So we have another alternative. There's like four competing elevator designs right now. It's um, almost like the water design competition uh, in, in, in Minecraft. 
anymore. You this can farm... take the engineers off campus, but you can't take the engineers <laughs> out of campus. I don't know if this one would work in every dorm, because McGregor ha has the benefit of the elevator only stops on every third floor, so there's a lot more space. Hmm. Uh, we have a question from Twitch, actually. Uh, did a G entry flag get put in? I don't know what it means. Oh no, where'd you go? Oh, Oops. I'm above you. Are you in the elevator? Oh, I see. Uh, I'm from G entry, but I did not. I should have put that in. I had not put that in yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's the little details. Mm -hmm. So uh, you just hit one of these buttons. Uh, one of them will take you down. The other one will take you up. The buttons, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, am I already all the way up? I think this, make sure this isn't triggered. There you oh, go. I'm going up. The lever was triggered. Oh, right. It was stopped. So then going up works out well. You can hit the levers on the right hand side to stop you on a floor. Mm -hmm. Going down, it's a little buggy. Okay. You have to like hit the lever right as you're reaching the floor, or otherwise you'll stop too early. Uh, How do we join the server? Oh, if you're an MIT community um, related person, if you go to icecream-machine.mit.edu and log in with your certificates, it should give you all the information on joining. And if the Discord fall. server link is still broken, please just like message me. It involves actually joining the Discord, adding your name to a spreadsheet, um, and then basically that gives us uh, that that gives the mods enough information to be able to verify that you're actually part of the MIT community. Yeah, like I, anyone can really join the server just to like look around, but to get build permissions, we have to verify that you're either like a prefrosh or part of the MIT community. That prefrosh just to a lot? keep from griefing. Um, there are some prefrosh that have actually been around for like various MIT programs that they do know what the buildings and the like do look like, so we've let them. Right, they have the nice photos. They don't. They don't see all of the uh, the dirty corners. <laughs> okay, uh, let's. Um, we're we're about halfway through the stream, so I would I do want to like start making our way over to uh, to to Nick's house. Uh, but actually, I, I, I do want to see if I can look into one furnished room. Is there is there a room somewhere on this floor, Oscar? Uh, this is you want to see McGregor rooms? Yeah, just one. Yeah, this is the head of associate head of house apartment. You can go down a couple floors, so we can see some. Like, uh, any, like this floor? Any of these, yeah, any of these. The entry. All right, there's half a bit in this one. <laughs> This one's this one's is furnished. Yeah, they mostly are copies of each other, and they look just like this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, it, it gets the point across. This is this is a dorm room. It's got a desk. It's got a, it's got a work. And of course, you know, if if uh, MIT students do join the server, uh, you can feel free to customize your room. The way how it's supposed to be. Yeah. yeah, I will be, I will be doing some customization on our room. Yep. Cool. Oh, Firescar, um, question from the chat. Uh, someone's asking which year. Uh, I left Gen. I let's say for four years in Gentry up 2013, 2017. Hmm. In G four two one. Uh, let's head back outside, uh, and then uh, walk walk down, walk for the west, so that we can get to next, and we'll see the rest of the architecture along the way. Yep. I think we can go up. Just up and out the and down. Yeah, and then out this door. Right, we'll go out to the classic MIT beef fire walking on the roof. Ah, uh, yes, roofs. I have been on roofs, yes. <laughs> well, I, mean, I mean, this is a funny thing, right? Because obviously MIT does not want students walking on the roofs of most buildings, but when we're in Minecraft, we're flying everywhere. Oh, yeah. 
all right. I should, I should explain proximity voice chat to people, actually. Um, when anyone's talking to me, if we're within 15 blocks of each other, we can hear each other. So the voice is actually happening over Discord, and that's like a really, really clever script that's basically putting us into ad hoc created rooms so that uh, we can hear each other. Um, and that changed. So if there's like a long strand of people, but they're all within 15 blocks of each other, everyone will be able to talk to each other at once. Um, uh, Shina, do people, do alums uh, find the server the same way that MIT students just go to Ice Cream Machine and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, alums can also join that way similarly. If you run into any issues, I recommend emailing sipv-minecraft-root at mit.edu. I'll drop it in the chat. Cool. That's the email that goes towards like everyone who's moderating the server. Because we're currently being hosted by SIPB, which is the Student Information Processing Board. Um, I've actually been connecting with a lot of other colleges that have similar like campus builds and things, and they've mostly had things arise out of like esports clubs. And I think MIT is really unique that we came from a computing background, so we have the ability to develop really cool features like um, proximity voice chat or talk with some people who wrote actual code for Spigot, which is part of the platform that we use for together multiple instances of the world like one that's view only for tours or one like the one we're currently in that's for building right and we'll show people the lobby and what to expect if they came in here for the first yep. time Oops. I yeah. just yeah. actually let's head down to the ground level because i think it looks better you know walking it really really looks like dom row when you're walking on the ground and shane is probably like so high above us that she can't hear us right now yeah, yeah. Someone else is joining us. So let's see, where are we? That was McGregor. Wait, wait, which dorm is this one? I keep forgetting. This is new. This is new house. Yeah. So we're passing by Bert and Connor. Long live Bert and Connor. Well, Bert, Bert, Bert was all the way back, right? Much further back. Oh, it was, it was a little bit back, yeah. Yeah. Oops. And next house. New house and next house, which was named because it was next to new house. New house, and yeah, there there is a small petting zoo outside of next house slash new house because someone decided to put it there. That is not supposed to be there, but eh, fun things. A petting zoo of what llamas or buddies? Um, just various animals. Yeah, this isn't the actual entry to next house. It's around the corner. So follow me. All right. over here so yeah a fun thing is that next house actually did part of their i3 video which is one of the videos that um the undergrad dorms organized to um show off their dorm to like various prefrosh and people who are interested in the dorm um yeah in minecraft so like they had various actors that were going through the different rooms and the different places that are really important to them i am not a next house resident but i spend a lot of time here and i really appreciate all the detail that went into here mm -hmm. like, TFL, which is the tastefully furnished lounge where a lot of Dexties hang out. Right. A door to the courtyard. What is it? Uh, right a little grill. Yep, continuation of the lounge. Down there were the ping pong and pool tables and the laundry and the exec closet and various other things are. Mm -hmm. The ramp that goes towards the elevators and dining. Oops. Someone put in these lights here i gotta go down so yeah next dining one of my favorite places in the world <laughs> <laughs> just kidding well it probably is actually i mean food's important it's, uh, it's a very good place in the mit world <laughs> one thing that that's a, that seems to be it, 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 it's funny how like certain objects just become like Scenes, uh, a consistent scene, like the uh, like the scaffolding with the carpet on top represents a, a, a desk, and the brewing station re represents a coffee machine. Uh, 
So even though you know I'm seeing the Minecraft brewing station, I've also put coffee machines over in the, in the video lab building, and I just use this item because it's because because I saw it being used elsewhere on MIT Minecraft for that purpose. Yeah. I think it's notable also to talk about, um, yeah, Next House's like elevator design. Like they've been using these um, shafts over here that you might see uh, close to dining and using elevators to get between floors along with stairs as a companion. Mm -hmm. yeah. The problem with, uh, with ladders is that it can be difficult to stop on the floor that you want, but, uh, yep. but you can always fly, of course. I'm trying to get through this door. I we'll have their very CPUs. I stopped on the third floor. Let's check on uh, Theta Theta Theta. Uh, room 333. It's one of my friend's rooms. So there's like a little like... Drop down further than you think. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Go for us. I'll hide my UI so that we can have a little more space for the screen. Three, three, three. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And they also like have their like lounge space here, which is represented. Um, mm -hmm. I'm actually working on an essay on how the structure of the MIT dorms affects their individual cultures, which might turn into a series of essays at this point. But things like the placement of lounges, placement of rooms, and like overall structure of the building really impacts the way that people socialize, which is really interesting. Yeah, so is that for a like like a class? Uh, uh, uh my own personal like... interest. If I could get class credit for it, that would be amazing. But overall, I think this project is actually causing me to reflect on like you know how architecture impacts our lives. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine that's for uh, course four would definitely you know it, it it seems like a perfectly legitimate individual research project. <laughs> or STS credit, that would be nice. STS, yeah, STS work. My my uh, uh, sister did an entire project on plumbing. <laughs> she was an STS PhD. But yeah, um, yeah, the wonky wing problem? structure is quite a thing. We can uh, head out anytime that we need to and head over to the rest yeah. of campus media lab and everything. Yeah, actually, let's meeting. let's cross back to um, what I want to do is I want to um, head out to the. Um, to Memorial Drive. Um, not quite sure how I get out of here. <laughs> Do you know how to get um, out of here? I think we just go down the elevator and out the, the lobby again. I don't think a lot of the stairwells are put in properly yet. <laughs> All right, elevator it is. I'll take the stairs down personally. Oh, this, this is gonna get dizzy. I'm gonna take the elevator. <laughs> But yeah, we've actually been talking with a lot of, hold on, yeah, a lot of like MIT departments, like ranging from commencement wanting to do a special video, various alumni apart, uh, departments that want to give alumni tours, mm -hmm. um, the quest for intelligence as we continue to use computing resources, like we've been trying to beg NVIDIA to give us ray tracing hardware and stuff like that to make more pretty screenshots. Oh yeah, um, NVIDIA's new ray tracing plugin for Minecraft. Was yeah. Lots uh, of things. Let's let's pop out here. Oh, imagine being not being up to fire code. Oof, East Campus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know that's that's uh, that's part of the brand. That's part of the East Campus brand. Um, actually, yeah. So let's uh, let's head out to Mem Drive. I want to because you know it's it's also neat to see all of these buildings from uh, from the riverside. Always envious of the uh, next house and their uh, decks. It's like new, new house and getting all these things wrong. What, what, what does that say? Okay. Is this McGregor Low Rise? Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Um, I actually want to check out one of the boat houses. I think we're coming up on one. Oh yeah, the detail of the boat houses. Thank you, sailing and crew and rowing teams and everything. Right. Do you know who built this? It's amazing. Because uh, 
whoever built the inside of this clearly spent a lot of time in here. There's the men's locker room, the women's locker room, you know, and the walls. But there's things like little seats in there. It's amazing. Laundry. <laughs> yeah. The the fact that the rooms are aren't just you know accurate, but they're also labeled. I think uh, clearly shows that you know somebody really left this place. And also um, the banners everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah. The MIT colors are everywhere with the mm -hmm. banners, and that's across the Charles River, right there. I believe there are cruise shells at the bottom of the river. Like people actually, <laughs> there are a few like dead boats in there. On yeah, there's some, what is it, boats on the other sailing pavilion, uh, closer to Killian. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's, let's, let's hit that way. See, like, yep. that's a boat. That's a boat under the water right there. Going down the Charles. Needs more geese, I agree. Yeah. So you can see Baker such a complicated structure that it needs you know a lot of fine work there but clearly the people who are responsible for baker are trying to do it to, to do it right so it takes a little longer than the more rectangular boat but you'll get there i also want to point out Ash, uh, not ashdown sorry massive hall's uh, roof is crazy detailed look at all that Got heat exchangers and hitchback and stuff. Um, let's see. What else have we got here? We've got the MBTA bus. This is where you actually go back to the lobby. Oh, there's a cat here. Okay. Kitty. The cat's name is Spotify. Um, and uh, this is where you will actually take the. Uh, this is, this is how you actually get back to the lobby area. So let me just quickly show you how that works. Um, you walk in through the front of the bus, head towards the back, and that will teleport you over to the lobby. Um, Are you still having issues with voice chat while moving between servers? I can still hear you just fine. Can you hear me? I think so. Okay. Oh, I think you might not be able to hear me. Oh well, I mean... This is the lobby area. I just wanted to show how pretty it is with all of these sculptures. Um, and you, there is a survival mode for people who want like the classic Minecraft experience on the LED campus. But uh, we'll head back to the building area. You can see this giant, I don't know, almost like a DNA spiral. Here we go. And then we're back on the bus again. Yeah, what is it? Shout out to the time that I spent two days working on features to make sure that bunnies could spawn in MIT because it was an important feature that was important to me. Right. I mean, <laughs> we, I, I've only seen one bunny today uh, on the, uh, just, just walking around MIT campus, but I haven't actually walked towards the student center yet. And uh, I should point out that the actual computer that's running this server is also represented in MIT Minecraft. Uh, yeah, in so... the SIPI office. In the city you office, can take a peek there is, later. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I've got about 10 minutes left. So I actually kind of want to make sure that uh, we head over to east, the east side of campus and just like look around. Is there a particular route which is like a bit more built up? Because I know there's some, there's some places that are just empty facades. Um, yeah, I think it's just flying over the infinite right now or just warping there if you so want to get closer. I'll just walk, walk down the infinite just so that people can see. I really should put up some maps representing all the flyers that are usually there. So, welcome to lobby 7. Got a big skylight on top. Purell dispensers. Purell dispensers. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's lots of Purell. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> Is Harvard next? Okay, so this is complicated because Harvard doesn't actually have a Minecraft build yet. And right. I've been trying to get some people onto it, considering that our maps are basically joined if you go so far up Mass Ave. But uh, they're the only school in the Ivy League that just does not have a Minecraft map yet. Cough, cough. <laughs> we, we did give them a little nod. I, I believe that's like a staircase that goes to 
a site marked Harvard somewhere at the edge of the map. But that's it. Yeah. Uh, so this is the Infinite Corridor, uh, the admissions office. Maybe. When was this put together? It wasn't like yeah, I wasn't here two weeks ago. Uh, I don't know. There's a little I... thing representing the boba sales that are usually in lobby ten. Right, that's a little tough. <laughs> yeah, this is also Rip Bexley. I agree. Yeah, Bexley is right now representing what's actually there right now, which is a big grassy field. Um, but that's been a discussion about trying to build up the old dorms. Uh, the way how they used to be. Uh, there's still ongoing discussion. Should it try? To, should we try to capture campus the way how it is, or the, how the way how it used to be? And right now, it's kind of still a blend of both. Uh, yeah, oh, we've been working so with the museum with thinking about like doing historical representations using like old floor plans and multiple servers representing the way that MIT used to look maybe like a decade ago or something. Mm -hmm. Well, in that case, then we got to build up uh, building twenty, where uh, and take the status on our own. Six C. How do we get into six C from here? Uh, there's just a door. So, right here. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So, so Bars obviously, of color. Six C is more built up than six right now. Yeah, so I think what was it, Cecilia Sicaros or something like that, created the uh, the art installation of the, all the floor colors, and it was just amazing. Props to them. It also works really well in Minecraft uh, because it's mm -hmm. large swaths of color. And you can see this. Are the know, tunnels this... going to be in this map? Yes, the tunnels are going to be present for sure. Yeah. Some right. places actually do have tunnels already, but not completely. Yeah, they're not, they're not very well connected right now, but they will be. Like, I'm, I'm impressed. There's different things on different floors on, in this build, and that's really cool. All right, back up to six. Oh, the, the George Eastman post uh, sign. Where is that? That's on my right, right? If I'm not mistaken. So this will be uh, building the building six, and I guess this is six one twenty. Yep, that was the Eastman sign right there. Yeah, and George Eastman with his uh, very polished nose. Right there. <laughs> How do you make signs like that? Maps. They, they are actually really maps. big maps. Yeah, if you center click on them, you will get a copy of the map, uh, and uh, that gives you an idea. And then you just put it on an item frame. Uh. So, just gonna, I'm just going to slowly walk towards uh, my office and just talk about things that that I had a chance to build up. But yeah, that's that the, the green building in the background and the green building that fell on its side in front of us. East campus is in front of us. Another view of the green building. And the dot. This is this grassy area. Yeah, I, I'm um I'm gonna have to like speed through this a little bit because I've really only got like a minute or two, but here's Walker. Walker seems smaller in this uh, I don't know. I, I'm sure it's built to scale, but it seems smaller. Yeah, I think we had like all the floor plans and stuff cut out as accurately as possible, but yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, this is East Campus, and there is a lot of neat detail in East Campus as, uh, as well. Like, you know, the fifth floor is all black, full of black banners. Uh, here's the outside of uh, E14. Uh, which is the new Media Lab building, which looks really, really good. Uh, uh, give it, uh, if you've seen the real pictures. But the inside, uh, I have to admit, we haven't spent a lot of time building that out yet. So, uh, finally, this is the building where the MIT Game Lab is. Uh, E15, uh, there's an art gallery in there, and this always adds uh, on this pillar. Um, this is an old hack called the Upside Down Lounge. So it sort of looks like a lounge that's upside down um, with chairs and a little potted plant. And just a little Easter egg. Uh, if you stand right about underneath this pillar and look straight up, you should occasionally see a drop of water come down. 
Uh, and that is uh, because oh oh someone fixed it. That's that's not good. <laughs> there should be actually a little pool of water underneath here because it's always dripping. And you're right. I will fix that at some point in the future. Um, finally, we were talking about large swaths of color. Um, and over here, uh, there was an artist called I believe it's Ken Nolan. I know his last name is Nolan. Uh, who designed these sort of the color stripes that you see on the side uh, of the Meteor Lab building. This is the old Meteor Lab building, E15, and uh, unfortunately those stripes are actually very thin in real life and we have to work with one meter uh, cubes in, um, in Minecraft. So as a result of that, they're a lot thicker and there's a lot fewer of them in, uh, in Minecraft. Um, it's a spiritual recreation. Mm -hmm. I I do want to point out one one thing about the third floor. Oops, if I can just get back on the third floor, and uh, this is where the MIT game lab is. I think we're the only part of the MIT Minecraft build that has cable trays. Uh, I'm very proud of this. The fact that we have cable trays. Yeah. And I would I would advocate for for all the other buildings to add cable trays where necessary. But yeah, this is where the MIT Game Lab is. And this is probably, I think, where we're going to end up today. Uh, so I want to thank thank Sheena Artek again so much, and, and, and Firestar, uh, for uh, being with us today. And um, there's more information, again, on, uh, on chat about how to get to the, the servers if you want to check it out for yourself. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much. Sure. Yep, thank you, Philip, for streaming and showcasing the awesome project. Yeah. Uh, this was this was great. And uh, for anybody who's part of my class, we are meeting back in the Zoom room right now. Uh, and uh, for everybody else who isn't part of my class, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, and um, uh, I hope you will get a chance to see this for yourself for the future when even more stuff will get built up. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye.